Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Ah, Intel Celeron, a range of CPUs that often get associated with poor performance. I'm not just talking about this one, which to be fair is quite bad, but even the newer ones have by association been stigmatized due to the Celerons of days gone by. Get a bad reputation and that sticks with you for life. Hey, that guy's just donated a million pounds to charity. Yeah, but he robbed three banks last year. No matter how you reinvent yourself, your past won't be forgotten by everyone. And whilst that is quite an extreme analogy to use as a comparison with PC hardware, I hope it emphasises my point. I shall now quote a humble entry submitted to Urban Dictionary by a user in 2006. To paraphrase, this user wrote, designed for the sole purpose of creating a processor that didn't cost much, and then goes on to say, your Celeron is so unbelievably slow, followed by Celerons can't power any machine. There are definitions that differ from this one on there too, but this one represented the general consensus. However, things have come a long way. In the past, I've reviewed the G1840 and the G3900 and found that they were suitable low-cost CPUs, even in budget gaming setups. They're not the best? No, not by a mile. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the best KB Lake Celeron Money Can Buy's gaming performance. And for reference, we'll be including comparisons to the Pentium G4560, possibly the best budget CPU for your money right now. Before I get started, I just want to say that the Pentium is the one to buy. This was obvious, and the focus here isn't the comparison, but rather to see if the G3950 can at least keep up, and to see if the Celeron name is now something to be respected, at least a little bit. So on your left we have the Celeron G3950 paired with the GTX 1060, and on your right we have the Pentium G4560 paired with the same card. It's also worth mentioning that the G4560 has hyper-threading and the Celeron doesn't, something that may make all the difference in a world where dual cores can sometimes cause stutter. We'll start here with Overwatch with the game at 1080p and Ultra settings. These averages were taken over an hour's gameplay on different maps during intense gunplay when the game was at its most demanding. During this time, the G3950 hit 70 FPS on average and the G4560 sat at around 85. Not that close, but 70 FPS is nothing to sniff at and despite the two cores minus hyper-threading, I experienced no stuttering. Battlefield 1 now with Ultra at 1080p to see 35 frames per second here with the Celeron. Not such a great result to be honest, but it's still a playable one. Compare this to that of the G4560 and we see a huge difference, at least double in fact with that hitting 75. However, the Celeron isn't performing badly. GTA 5 next, a game that thinks the more cores the better. The Celeron held its own though at very high settings with any advanced features turned off by achieving 50 FPS on average. There was some stutter of which I remember all too well from my G3258 days. I love that CPU but GTA 5 didn't. It's still more than playable though and nothing severe. When we look at the $10 more G4560 we see the average FPS increase to 70. Finally we ran the Far Cry Primal in-game benchmark. Ultra settings here and the G3950 hit 44 on average, with surprisingly no stuttering. Although, just like throughout, the CPU usage has been between 90 and 100%. 44 is a great result and although it doesn't quite match the 58 that the G4560 produced, I could still happily game on this KB Lake Celeron offering all day. So yes, it's okay but it isn't worth buying for gaming as long as the G4560 is so close in price. It uses a little less power, sure, but I'm afraid that's not reason enough. If the Pentium didn't exist, the Celeron would be a pretty good deal, or if it was priced at $25, then I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. So, a Celeron's good now? Well, it's alright. But surely alright is a huge step up from unbelievably slow, right? So guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know your thoughts on this Celeron KB Lake processor down below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So thank you so much again for watching and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.